Hello and welcome back to The Note, back in London this week. Even though I'm back in London, let's talk about US equities today. We are still, to many people's surprise, very close to all-time highs on the main US indices, and that's despite a dramatic writing down in earnings forecasts so far this year. Now, the earnings season for the first quarter is now underway. Is this the point when we will at last have the long-awaited correction in US stocks? With me now to discuss this is our old friend, Ian Harnett of Absolute Strategy Research. Ian, Ian. Ian thanks. Hi, John. Let's start by taking a look at uh, the overall US economy. This is a chart that you've put together which appears to suggest a very sharp slowdown in sentiment towards the economy. T explain to me what's going on here. What we've put together is our activity surprise indicators. We take all the monthly numbers that get uh, published every day and, and we, we then see hmm. how you get the outturn. What you've got is one of the biggest declines that you've had, you know, really since 2011. Mm -hmm. Which was um, the last big the, correction. Which was the last big correction. Hmm. And nearly everything has, has disappointed relative to expectations, everything apart from the Labour data in the last three months. So, you hmm. know, in the past that would be a, enough to take you down almost one percentage points on the US GDP forecasts from 3% where they are today down towards 2%. Okay, so this is a very serious slowing in the data. Now let's take a look at earnings expectations. There are obviously lots of ways you can look at this. This is the absolute strategy way. Take us through where we have got to with US expectations compared to European. Well, US expectations have come down very dramatically. You know, if you're, you're looking at uh, uh, trailing numbers that are, that are and, and uh, forward-looking numbers that are that are coming down towards five percent for the US and sixteen percent contrasting for the eurozone. Mm. You know, people are worried about that strength of the dollar really impacting those mm. international stocks in the US market. But we also have oil in there, presumably, yep. I mean, which presumably is also priced in to some great extent. I mean, is this yeah, overdone? To I, you know, we don't think it is because although you've got oil that's going to be dragged that down, there's an actual lack of pricing power. And in the past, when you've seen the ISM prices paid numbers as weak as they are, actually US earnings growth has ended up being almost minus 10, minus 20 year on year. So, you know, those expectations of a 5% decline in the first quarter EPS numbers, they could actually be much worse. More importantly, it could be a domestic story rather than just an international story. Okay, let's talk about that a little bit more. So you're saying that even though we are pricing in a bad earnings quarter, you actually think it's going to be a worse one? Yes, it's, it's going to be a domestic story, not just that dollar strength story. And I think the, the mm. crux of it is that oil price weakness and it's had an impact on US growth. The oil rig numbers are down 50% now year on year and we think that takes about half a percent out of GDP just by itself and that's going to mm. impact the second and third and fourth round impacts into construction, housing, transport and eventually that's going to be the thing that actually depresses uh, this quarter's GDP okay, numbers and, that, and the earnings. And that's still plainly not in the price. And that isn't in the price and what we've seen over the last mm. uh, year is that Valuations per se haven't mattered, but if you get valuations and earnings disappointment, that's when you get the correction. Ergo, we're going to have a correction. That leads to the next question. This is a pretty bearish summing up you've just given. Why only a correction? And bear in mind that the Fed is data dependent at the moment. You're suggesting that it's not going to like the data. If the Fed ends up postponing a rate hike until next year or even gets prompted into doing more QE, which is possible maybe from yeah. on, on your scenario, doesn't that alleviate the need for a correction? Well, I think, you know, the, it, it will only get that type of alleviation from interest rates if, if we don't, if we see some of that weakness coming through in the equity market as well. I think, you know, there's two factors. First of all, Back in 2011, it was a synchronized global slowdown. Yeah. So the fact that the Eurozone, the Japan are actually picking up, that's actually saving you from the worst of this. The second thing is, as you say, you know, we probably will see a postponing of that monetary tightening. So for us, that's the thing that limits this, that, that actually you just, you know, it's a buy the dip scenario that you'll eventually get. But the dip needs to be a good solid 10% before you buy. I think so. And I think that that's the, the key because if, if equities carry on powering ahead, then actually you might see the, uh, the, the Fed coming through and thinking macro prudential risk, asset prices are getting too toppy. Let's still go ahead with those rate rises. We think against this background of weak activity and close to zero inflation, 
it'll be a brave central bank that tightens policy over the next three months. OK, Ian. Well, thank you very much indeed. Note that I have been suggesting that we might be having a correction coming for a year or two now. Ian has only just now moved over to that position. Perhaps that's meaningful. This earnings season is a very risky point for US stocks.